Hi everyone, I'm Haley. I am a fourth year med student and in this video I wanted to share my pre-med application, go through a few things, um, and talk about my stats a little bit. I get a lot of questions and so I thought it'd just be nice to share it. Um, I remember thinking as a pre-med, like I don't know if I have the scores or the grades to get in, so hopefully this makes someone feel better if they're in that same headspace that I was. So I'll go through some parts of my application. Um, so we'll start off with my grades. So my first two years of undergrad, I actually did it at a community college and did that because it was cheaper. I was closer to home, um, but my grades did not, I did not do good in my first year of undergrad. I really struggled a lot um, with some of those like chemistry courses and you know, it was a hard time. So I got a C in general chemistry and I also got a C in calc one. So I had two C's on my transcript. I don't have my calculated GPA, but I remember it being low and being very disappointed and upset. Um, my following year at my community college, I did do better. My GPA went up. I got all A's and B's that year. And then I transferred to a four year university. Um, at my four-year university, I got a 4.0 the entire time I was there. So I had this upward trend of my GPA, which was really great. A lot of um, med school admissions committees during the interview liked to see that. They were impressed. Um, I was pretty happy with that. That's pretty like fulfilling for me to see you know, that upward trend in my GPA. So if you're struggling in some of those courses or you're getting a C here and there on your transcript, um, <clears throat> try to improve next semester and try to keep an upward trend things like that obviously the less these the better but you know you do what you can um so my MCAT score my, I took it twice I was a second time applicant so I applied two times to medical school the first time I took it I got a 501 and then the second time I took it I got a 507 I don't know if they changed their scales or if these are the same like scores people get now. Again, this was five years ago, so um, I don't know how relevant it is, but I applied twice because my first time a lot of the med school admissions committee people said, oh, you know, we'd like your MCAT to be a little bit higher, and so I just retook it, tried to beef up my application a bit, and so that was nice that I did have an increase in my MCAT score, so I ended up getting a 507, which was nice. Um, you know, if you do retake your MCAT, definitely try and make sure that you get an increase in your score. If it goes down, I, I don't know how they really view that. I don't think it's like the best thing in the world, but I don't think it completely destroys your chances of getting accepted into med school. Um, so next we'll go through my, some of my experiences. So research, I get a lot of questions on research, back when I had applied, it wasn't a very big deal if you had research or not, but I think now maybe med schools almost expect you to have at least one research project, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, again, just ask your advisor, things like that, and see what they recommend. I have two research experiences, and <clears throat> the reason I did this was because I just wanted to learn a little bit more about research. I wasn't necessarily interested in research itself but I thought oh you know this might beef up my application a bit more this might help and these projects sounded kind of fun and interesting so I went and did that I worked in an epigenetics lab I was looking at some genes and fruit flies like related to cancer that was kind of cool I liked that project and then I also liked um, I worked uh, with a PhD student on her like she was an ecology PhD student I think and so I was working on her with um, on her research with endangered species so that was fun too they were really helpful in teaching me you know the ins and outs of research collecting data and everything so I think those were great experiences uh, volunteering so with volunteering I would say try to spread it out over time if you can uh, I was able to do that with my volunteer experience so I did a little bit here and there throughout four years um, and that kind of builds those hours for you I get a lot of questions and DMs asking, you know, I only have this many hours of volunteering, is that good or not? And I don't know if there's a perfect number, I don't think there is, but I think 
you don't want to try to squish everything in at that last minute before you apply. I think that's just going to stress you out a lot. So I volunteered with hospice. I got 50 hours over the course of a year. Did a, like I said, an hour or two once a week throughout the course of a year. Um, I was volunteering with the Muscular Dystrophy Association. That was really fun. So they would like partner you up with a um, individual that has um, muscular dystrophy. And so you'd be a partner with them for the whole week and you go to this like live in camp and it was a lot of fun. Um, you get 24 hours of volunteer service over the course of seven days. I did it for two weeks and I ended up with a total of 336 hours. So it was really fun. I don't know, I think they stopped it with COVID, but maybe they brought it back, but that was a really great experience. I liked that. I also volunteered with my, like I was part of an honor society in university and we would fundraise and volunteer to help make this like Thanksgiving dinner drive for families in our local area and provide them with a Thanksgiving meal. So that was fun, did that. Um, moving on to some, not necessarily volunteering, but I got credit for these. So I worked as a teaching assistant um, in genetics and anatomy. So those were both really great experiences. I loved the anatomy one. It was a great um, community of people involved in the anatomy team. And I also got to dissect cadavers, so that was cool to talk about in my med school interviews. I also did get a letter of rec from my um, genetics professor as well as my anatomy professor. So those were very nice um, experiences that I had. So moving on towards to work and paid experience. So I think that when you get patient care experience where you're actually touching the patient or you're involved in their care somehow, is going to be very beneficial going forward through medicine um, and healthcare. So I get a lot of questions about like working as a scribe versus working as a CNA. I don't know how they view working as a scribe. Um, I know that they all were really happy and impressed that I was a CNA for a few years um, and I got a lot of patient contact that way. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, if you can be a CNA, I think you should. It's really great and um, you learn a lot of great bedside manner and how to take care of patients in that sense. So I worked as a CNA. I also included um, like my work as a nanny. So I did uh, nanny and babysit for a family for several summers throughout high school and some of college. So I did include that. I don't know if they counted that towards my like work hours or patient care hours or whatever, but I put it on there because I did do it. Um, I also worked in an after school program for all of high school and a few years of college as well during the school time. Um, and then after I graduated from my university, I'd moved home and worked, um, I had to apply again. So I had started working with, um, like in a group home with adults with developmental disabilities. That was a great experience. Uh, and then I also worked as a behavioral technician for children with autism spectrum disorder. So throughout all my experiences, I had a wide range of individuals and people from different backgrounds that I worked with. And I felt like that I had a lot to talk about during my med school interviews. And so keep that in mind when you try to find work. Um, make sure it's something you're gonna enjoy and you're gonna like talking about in your med school interview. Um, shadowing is another one. I get a lot of questions about like, is this enough shadowing hours? Again, I don't think there's a perfect hour, like amount of hours for that. I would say at least 40, especially if you want a letter of rec from the physician that you are shadowing. I think the more the better. Again, I would spread it out over some time. If you have some time in the summer, you know, maybe do half days for a month or a couple of weeks, uh, take some time off and then come back and see them again to shadow if that's possible. I shadow two physicians, one in primary care and then one in the emergency room. And I got a total of 50 hours from them. And so I did get letter of recs from them as well. So keep all of that in mind. I am not going to share my personal statement just because I don't want people to read it and then influence, you know, how they rate their personal statement. I feel like that makes it less genuine and less personal. <laughs> so um, I won't share that, but hopefully going forward, if you're a pre-med student that is applying, this helps um, guide you or figure out where to start. So thank you for watching. Bye.